London. All right, excellent. How are you? My name's Steve. I'm, a, I'm from Australia, actually. Some of you probably been to Australia, or some of you probably thought about going to Australia, and then went, how long does it take to get there? 27 hours. <laughs> on a plane. 27 hours in a tube of farts. <laughs> that's the reality none of you really want to, you know, take on board, but that's what's really happening. You're sitting there for a day and a half with 600 other people eating airline food. I'm telling you, someone's farting. Do you understand? <laughs> you get to Australia, you think you've got jet lag. I'm just telling you, it's not jet lag. Do you understand? <laughs> yeah, you've been basting. It's a ridiculous distance for any place to be on Earth, for God's sake. The next stop is the moon. <laughs> it's what it's like growing up there. You're standing there all the time going, what's the rest of the world doing? What are they up to? Can we join in? No. <laughs> well, why not? Because it's a 12 hours drive to the airport. Sit down. <laughs> it's and there's no one there. It's a continent twice the size of Europe. There's 22 million people there. That's no one. Do you understand? There's no one there. You want to see a queue in Australia? And I, you know, they think, it's, they think it's crowded, you know what I'm talking about? And I've been to Mumbai in India. 28 million people, one city. That's crowded. That's traffic. Try putting health and safety regulations on these people. Yeah, they're selling raw chickens on a piece of cardboard in the sun. <coughs> it's a brilliant place. We're always told in the West that we live in the free countries, but I don't know if that's necessarily true all the time, because, you know, freedom is a multifaceted construct. Mm which extends beyond political ideology. Yes. And I've been to Mumbai, and you can do whatever you want. You don't break the law, you do whatever you want. You want to sell some socks on a bridge? Sell some socks on a bridge. <laughs> Where's your shop, mate? Here. <laughs> what do you want? I've got three socks, a battery, and a hand grenade. You want it? <laughs> Brilliant. You want to hang out of the train? You hang out of the train! You want to go to the doctor? You don't have to go to the doctor. Why? There's an old bloke in the street with medicine. <laughs> you have to run around and wait in a queue and ring up. Can I get an appointment, see a doctor and get a prescription? No, you buy it off this bloke in the street. And my mate in North London, he goes to me, you'd buy medicine of an old Indian bloke in the street. So I went, for sure. He goes, why? I said, I'll tell you why, mate. Because he's 300 years old, he's got one tooth and he lives in a bin. He's still alive. <laughs> What? He knows shit. Should I trust him or some bloke in Muswell Hill with six mortgages? <laughs> but it's good to be here. Hammersmith Odeon. I know it's the Apollo, but I call it the Odeon because I'm old school. <laughs> I grew up with Motorhead. No sleep till Hammersmith. No sleep till Hammersmith Odeon. Exactly. Woo! Old school. That's what it is. I used to play in heavy metal bands, so that's why I had to leave Australia, because it doesn't like that kind of stuff. And I never suited Australia, it's a weird place for me to grow up in. My parents are British, and it's just strange being a white man in a black man's country in the middle of Asia. You know? <laughs> and the culture's strange, I never suited it, you know. It's all based around sport and racism. And, uh, <laughs> I wasn't very good at either of them, you know. I didn't know what to kick, you know. And, uh, yeah, yeah. and so I played in bands, I played here actually in 1989 in a heavy metal band and I, see I love, I love all forms of heavy metal I love heavy metal, thrash metal, black metal, death metal and uh, Enya actually <laughs> yeah, I know you think all things, it's a bit of a joke <laughs> it's not a joke most of you haven't listened to Slayer for eight hours in one day. And, you know, you get up to that type of nonsense. You do need something to relax in the afternoon, don't you? <laughs> and I did that joke in London one night at the comedy store. And this big geezer stands up. He goes, I bloody hate Enya. <laughs> you hate Enya? That's a bit intense. <laughs> George Bush is alive. Yeah, 
Bennett, George Bush, Dick Cheney, Condoleezza Rice, Tony Blair, Donald Rumsfeld, Henry Kissinger. See, these are global as demons. And this is Enya. I'm gonna mean, begin to hate. Hate positively. How can you be upset with Enya? Really, it's just silence coloured in. So it is like being upset with a waterfall. <laughs> Looking at a flower open and go, that's disgusting. <laughs> and recently, we had a brilliant time, but recently I just did a gig, a comedy gig at a heavy metal festival in Derbyshire called Bloodstock. And to tell you people the truth, I don't even know why they bothered getting comics to do the festival, because what they've done, like most things, they've become corporate. They stuck a theme park, like rides, within the confines of the ground, so people would have something to do besides bands, right? But that made me think, why did they even bother getting comedians? Because I've got to tell you people, there is nothing funnier than a goth on a dodgem. You understand? <laughs> yeah. I was out of London for the weekend because uh, that was the time uh, you, you were having your rights running around. Yeah, it was funny. <laughs> Just listening to the reporting, that's what I found funny. Just listening to them going, look at them! Looting! Bloody looters! Running around looting! Again, yeah, well, you know. You ever been to the British Museum? So. <laughs> Where'd you get that sphinx from? Norwich. <laughs> Is that your pyramid? Yeah, we found it in the Cotswolds. <laughs> it's under a hedge. Who'd have thought? <laughs> you would never museum if you didn't go looting. You come to the British Museum and look at our squirrel exhibit. <laughs> Put it in the Spitfire, make it look more interesting. You help yourself to a Yorkshire pudding on the way out. There you, go. <laughs> you know what I mean? The lies we're inflicted with in the 21st century, the war on terror to me is the ultimate one. How can you have a war on terror? What are you talking about? This doesn't even make sense. When's this going to end? When they've got the terror. <laughs> Relax, it's all gone. We're moving on to horror next. <laughs> and get those goths out of the dodgem for starters. This is insanity. You can't have a war on terror. You're having a war on terror, are you? That's right. What does war create? Uh. <laughs> terror. Exactly. So you're having a war against the consequence of the actions you're involved in. <laughs> yeah. But I know. Ours is good terror. <laughs> it's good, peace, freedom loving terror, you know. Kind of like terror light, you know. <laughs> sort of a diet terror. You know. Sort of, I can't believe it's not terror, you know. It's, uh... <laughs> it's terror. And then we deal with that. And then next, what do we deal with? Well, this is all happening. Oh, the, by the way, the, the planet's broken. It's all warmed up. And uh, yeah, we have to fix it. Now, uh, because we've broken it. And uh, you know, we've done tests. Who has? You know, experts. <laughs> Who are they? Oh, don't worry about it. They're here. <laughs> what are you talking about? I don't even believe in it. People freak out. What do you mean you don't believe in it? I don't believe in it. You have to believe in it. It's the law. Well, it's not yet. I'm sure it will be. But until then, no. Why should I believe in it? What are you talking about? They're running around the world, dropping depleted uranium all over the earth, sitting there, letting nuclear weapons off underneath the sea, and the rest of us, what are we going to do? Sit at home with a special light bulb and a shopping bag for life. <laughs> yeah. That's what you have to do. And at the end of the day, 
while all this goes on, what else is happening? Well, the X Factor is on the news. <laughs> this, this is not normal. It's a TV show. Why is it on the news? <laughs> it's not normal. When I grew up, the Price is Right wasn't on the news. <laughs> no, this is not news. This is rubbish. And I'm here to tell you people, being English, the X Factor, what have you done? You should be ashamed of yourselves. You should stop it. I know all countries around the world now have got these kind of stupid shows, but you, especially America, they're too far gone. Doesn't matter about them. And you, what are you up to? You can't have the X Factor. You can't watch the X Factor. This is England. You made Black Sabbath, Judas Priest, Iron Maiden, Venom, Motorhead, Def Leppard, Deep Purple, Led Zeppelin, The Rolling Stones, The Who, The Beatles, The Smiths, The Cure, The Dam, The Jam, The Police, The Sex Pistols, The Clash, Peter Gabriel, Kate Bush, Jarvis Cocker, David Bowie, Queen, Pink Floyd, Radiohead, Superchamp, Chemical Brothers and The Prodigy. And if you're watching The X Factor after a resume like that, I'm just telling you, you are a bit of a bastard. Absolutely glorious. Hope you have an excellent, excellent time. See you later. Cheers.